Hello there and a very warm welcome to another edition of Channels Beam. I am Victor Mathias. The United Nations in 2002 convened an interagency task force to review activities involving sports within the organization. The aim of the task force was to promote more systemic and coherent use of sports in development and peace activities, particularly at community level. 14 years after, to what extent has that dream been realized? Today on the program, we will be discussing how sports is promoting peace and development. But before then, let's take you through some of the social cyberspace trends in the past week. The Nigerian football circles was trending, albeit for the wrong reason, as chairman of Ifai Uba Football Club was handed a 10-match ban and a 2.5 million naira fine for invading the football pitch last week during the football match between Ifai Uba Football Club and Heartland Football Club and raising an arm against Heartland FC goalkeeper. A bill by the Motion Picture Council of Nigeria, Mopikan, aimed at bringing quote and unquote sanity to Nollywood, that's Nigeria's movie industry, by regulating every aspect of the industry from lighting to script writing, made Nigerians go gaga in protesting the said bill. Well, we have to wait and see how that plays out, but joining me today to shed more light on the topic of the day via Google Plus Hangout is the founder, University of Ibadan Skating Club, Philip Durojae. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And a sports enthusiast studying in Ukraine, Victor Bamishae. Thank you very much. But to begin with, Victor, what do you understand by sports in peace and development concept? Uh, I think... Uh... I understand the notion of sports to be uh, a platform that uh, has been, I mean, the number one platform that has been an attractant for youths these days. And uh, even in politics, you hear things like the spirit of sportsmanship. So it makes sure that uh, there's a platform for agreement, a platform for unity, a, a platform where people see one another, not just not, not as competitors, but as comrades. So I think uh, sports provide that platform for gathering youth together that attracts youth and a platform for orientation for youth. So if we have a message, sports can be that platform where we can spread our message of peace and our message of hope because you always have the ears to listen. I believe that sports is, is, a, tool for, is a tool for the whole community, is a tool for youth. I believe sports can be entertaining. I believe sports can be fun. I believe sports can can imbibe the competitive spirits within youths. And I believe that there is, and, and also we know the sports industry is is a is a trillion dollar industry, and it's it's ripe for um for business. You can move into sports into the sports business and make a lot of uh, a lot of money and have a lot of impact on youth. So I believe sport is, is an all-round thing that everyone in one time or the other have participated in, will participate in in the future also. Uh, I'll, I'll tell of my own story. Uh, I think my proficiency in Russian language right now was uh, was built by my participation, I mean, my active days in basketball. Uh, on court, I, I get to interact with the uh, Ukrainian guys, then I was living in the city of uh, Nikolaev. Uh, you see, through that interaction based on, on, the, on the basketball court, I was able to not just build social skills, but also learn the language because I had to communicate with them almost every day that we get to play basketball. So basically, uh, I would say from my own experience, it's been able to build tolerance. I mean, even they want to learn about my culture and what gave them the platform was uh, basketball we shared in common. Uh, so I think uh, not just me, for everybody who has been involved in sports, when we see that there is mutual respect uh, on that platform, and I think it's something we should encourage uh, because it will lead to cross-cultural tolerance and also uh, ethnic groups. 
All right, can you tell us how global sporting events have helped in fostering peace and development? When you look at World Cup, for instance, uh, for every, let's look at the country hosting it, let's, or, or even not just World Cup, every major tournament that our country is participating, let us look at the host countries. The first thing is it puts those countries on the map. Uh, investors begin to come in. That means right now uh, it boosts the economy. Now, in, in preparing for those uh, games, there is job and employment opportunities created. So it means right now we have less idle people. And when we have less idle people, uh, uh, vice, social vices will be reduced. And it also make you know, you want to learn about the country you are going to, the next country you are, or, or your, who your opponent will be. And because of the respect in the sports, we have something called international uh, uh, and mutual uh, you know, respect and responsibility and care for one another. And that can lead even to better multilateral and bilateral relationships between countries and also uh, ethnic groups. All right, guys, just hold it for a minute. We take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment. Join us again.